the false viewpoint of religious and spiritual cultism. I don't believe there is stupidity, delusion and casual ill will manifested anywhere more than in the domains of religion and spiritual cultism. Those who would truly live as a sacrificing God must struggle every day to maintain a level of wit and good humour in the face of ceaseless, disheartening confrontations with believers and aspirants in the various traditions. There is a righteous kind of sheer and pious madness that seems almost always to infect those who should be the enlightened minds and friends of mankind. The reason for this is that religious and spiritual persuasions do not commonly require intelligence, freedom from illusions, or a fundamentally moral relationship to the world. Most often, just the opposite is true. Religious and spiritual cults and institutions typically thrive on human neurosis, fear, gull gullibility, childishness, amoral self-possession, and the need for fascinating experiential consolations of either a bodily or mental kind. The conventional religious and spiritual point of view is oriented toward the primitive egoic search for indefinite, independent or personal survival. It is the preservation and glamorization of self that is commonly served by the conventions of institutional and mystical grace. Wisdom barely enters into the whole affair and the moral disposition of honour, manly trust, positive compassion, humour, love and service, extended to all, is casually bypassed by most of those who pervade the world with ultimate beliefs and salvation techniques. Those who cling to one or another religious or spiritual way must realise that the foundation of all such ways is the disposition of sacrifice. Every way is, above all, a system of self-sacrifice, not of self-preservation and of immunity to life through internal or subjective fascinations. Religious and spiritual activity is, above all, moral activity. It must be expressed in a new, free, sober and truly compassionate disposition. Such a disposition freely anoints the world with help and intelligent consideration. It finds great pleasure in the intelligent and true human companionship of others and welcomes wise and thoughtful confrontation. And in the face of the persistent dullness of the cults, such a disposition often becomes fierce and allowed. The whole earth, the cosmos and every separate being is a great sacrifice. Therefore, let us consent to fulfil the law. Let us give ourselves up to that each, so that each temple, each bodily and mental person, may become a temporary and perishable altar of self-giving into the mystery that pervades us.